Okay, so we're going to continue our presentation on JavaScript. Okay, so I wanted to make sure I was really clear about how the code is interpreted and loaded by the browser. So again, what happens when the user downloads the page is it renders the page top-down and just rolls through the HTML. So as you can see, the first thing it sees here is this JS that loads the Norse data for this particular application. Then it starts to read through the hangman. So let's again look back at that real quickly. And you can see that the whole thing is a function. So basically it's going to just go ahead and render the function but it doesn't actually run it. It just precompiles it and gets it ready to go. Now uh, because we've set the function to run on load with this after the page is rendered then the JavaScript interpreter actually begins to run the code and the first thing it'll do is it'll create all these variables the rest of these are just function definitions they don't actually get run they've already been pre-compiled when it went through the, pay, um, the file the first time but if you come down here this is actually a function call and that calls the init method which is the one I went through before and what that does is that uses the get element by ID to grab all the pieces and to start the game okay so that's how it starts so it's really important to understand that when you write a function definition like this that's not going to run you have to call the function like I did down here similarly when I use an event handler I assign a function to an event. It doesn't get run until the event happens. And the event that we commonly use is the on click event. So this assigns this guest letter with the AE ligature. That's the name of that character there. And then when the user pushes the button called key 01, it runs the function guest letter with the AE, like I've already showed you. So again, I just wanted to make sure I was real clear about that. I think I got kind of carried away with the uh, hangman code and uh, didn't make that as clear as I wanted to. And then the other thing that I wanted to clear up is that um, I actually am using the object-oriented approach here, an array of objects, rather than the parallel array. Uh, what happened was I still had the parallel array in the folder. I I, excuse me, I accidentally opened the parallel array file, not the object. So again, real quickly, this is the syntax for creating an array of objects. So var norse word square bracket, again the square bracket indicates an array. At the very end of this, which is really far down because we have like 1500 words here, you can find the matching square bracket and then of course a semicolon. Okay? and then each element in the array is an object and the object has two parts and so if you look here here's the first object and notice the square uh, the uh, curly braces there to denote that and then the first uh, member element is W which stands for word and M which stands for meaning so here the word in Norse is ah which is the word for river and then of course the meaning in English is river okay and then each of these is separated by a comma because it's a long list of these words so that's how we do the objects I think I went over that already in class okay I'm back in Dreamweaver I've opened another one of my Norse programs that I wanted to show you this one's got a little bit simpler structure it might be a little better as an example uh, this is what I call match game and uh, formally it uses what's called as a closure exercise so when we teach people uh, foreign languages this is a technique we use and basically the idea is that you get a sentence in the original uh, the target language that you're learning and one of the words has been uh, removed and then you have a multiple choice where you pick that and so I've written a program that automates that process and just takes a random sentence from, the, in this case, the Volsung Saga, which is Norse Saga text, and generates a closure exercise here. 
And uh, so again, this is a fairly simple example, and I thought this might uh, be a good one to go through with you. So looking over here in the HTML, uh, you can see that we have the uh, our CSS, and uh, then as we come on down here, uh, we have the header, and then I actually have the uh, script code right here inside the body. It doesn't necessarily have to be there. I could go ahead and uh, put it up here in the head. Um, again, some of this stuff just got built over time, and I was kind of lazy about updating in that. Uh, the Volsung JS is the Norse data set we just looked at, so I'm not going to open that again. Uh, let's look at the game uh, JS here. So if we come on over here, now this is not encapsulated, uh, and that probably could be updated. Again, I want to kind of reinforce how this works. So now, there's really not much in the page here. There's almost no content in the page, so there's nothing to get a handle on. Instead, this program actually creates all of the HTML elements programmatically with the JavaScript. Uh, as you can imagine, it won't work at all on a browser. It has no JavaScript. Okay, so again, we start out with some uh, global variables. <clears throat> and as this is run, those are instantiated. Then we have uh, a series of functions. And again, the functions are not run. They're simply compiled. So we have the uh, build the quiz display and then start the game and then uh, we come on down here and we have the list all that's a function that uh, basically shows the entire saga and shows the line that you're learning in context there and then we have uh, the guess which actually handles when you pick one of the options uh, and then we have an about information now, because there's no information already in the HTML, it's real simple. There's almost no content here. This program is generating that as we go. So you can see here that we've got a lot of markup in the JavaScript code. And um, again, you have to really understand the HTML to be able to follow this because you've got HTML, CSS, and JavaScript all happening at once. Again, everything here is just a function definition, except at the very top, where we have some variable initializers like that, where I still have highlighted. And then at the very end of the file, you can see the document on load start game. And so what that does then is, again, it rolls through, and when the document is loaded, then it launches the game. And the start game is a method there. So, uh, let's go up here, and there's the start game. Uh, this basically is a JavaScript comment, so this code is no longer active. When I was getting the game to work, I used that as a debugging statement, so that would tell me when the start game is actually called. Okay. Um, again, the rest of this is pretty straightforward. I don't think we really need to go through this line by line. Um, we do have a couple of reference points in the HTML markup. So even with what little is there, I've got what I need to create the content for the game. So here you can see that I'm looking for this content ID. If we come over here, that's right here. So again, basically what happens is the uh, game is going to be right here in this area <clears throat> and the code will um, dynamically replace it. So if we go back over to Live View and, uh, whoops, guess I have to be on the index. Oh, I just turned the Live View off. Okay. <clears throat> so the game is actually playing here in Live View and you can see that it dynamically makes the buttons and everything right now we have a uh, sentence being displayed and we have to guess which one of the words goes in there so thesum er nu something gefit ok er kala der volsungi so uh, I think that that's nothing and I got that correct so the um, window alert comes up and shows me that 
Again, if I want to see that in context, and I click context, now it shows me basically like 10 lines of the saga, and here's the very same sentence uh, that we just guessed. So that shows me the sentence in the context of the entire saga. Okay, and then if I want to go back, I hit play, and now we have a display where we tried one and we got one correct, and it kind of shows you a running total of how you're doing. About, uh, again, here about is not a pop up, it's uh, replacing the content. And uh, so, and actually, I have some directions here and that sort of thing. Again, if we go back to uh, Saga text, then it shows the entire saga, uh, and that's numbered. And um, again, if I go back to play, it comes back, and here's a new sentence. So, en sender signi at vita something tit er er the vart sigmunder liefer. And uh, I think that might be havat. Yep, I got it right. And. Uh, it's kind of interesting, it doesn't update this until you go to the next uh, <clears throat> uh, sentence. So there you can see that it just updated that. Okay, uh, so that's pretty much how it works. Again, I don't know that it's worth looking at the individual code for this, because uh, it's specific, and really I want you to kind of get more general ideas of how to do stuff here. Um, let's just take a quick look and see if there's anything worth pointing out. Uh, again, we use this basic DOM content uh, con <laughs> technique sorry, of grabbing an element from the markup and then replacing it. One thing you might want to see here is because I'm doing a lot of text, I use this technique where I start out with a variable which is a string, it has nothing in it, and then I just keep adding to it. So here we just build all this content up into one long string. Uh, and then we have a conditional block that adds stuff whether or not something is true. And then finally, if you look down here, we actually then write the string to the inner HTML of the handler. This part you've seen before, this just adds the event handlers. So I have again a single method called guess that takes 0, 1, 2, or 3. That corresponds to which one of the buttons the user has just guessed. And so then the guess method passes the uh, value that they printed, or, or clicked on, sorry. And then uh, again, this is just assigning the functions, and choice 1, 2, 3, and 4 are those buttons. Uh, here's the rest of the buttons. So context button, and that's a context method. And then our list all button has a list all method. Our play button has a start game method. The about button has an about method. And again, these methods are all here. There's the start game. Cruise on down here. There's the list all. And then here's the guess. So uh, that's what I really wanted to reinforce here. I think we're in pretty good shape for this. I'm going to go ahead and stop this and render it and get it up there for you to look at.